Hi again. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller and today I'm doing the second half of my Watts Solds which will be for last weekend. Oop, I covered it up. March 31st through April 2nd. What's going on over there? <laughs> Before we get started, I had a question on my last um, video about profit margins. And, you know, how do I determine, you know, what I'm going to pick up? I'm a volume seller and I don't mind the long tail items. So I really don't have a set price for, okay, I'm only going to buy stuff that I can make $15 on or $20. I know, especially when we do our large trips, I know I'm going to be buying a lot of bread and butter and I'm okay with that. I show you guys some of my lower dollar bread and butter sales, but I do sell stuff that's even cheaper than that. Because, you know, like I tell you guys a lot, um, sometimes I list something waiting to put something else with it and it sells. It might only sell for five or six dollars, but y'all, I source as cheaply as I possibly can. And at the bins, you know, I think ours is $1.89. I think it's $1.89. Um, and then when we're at yard sales, a lot of times I don't spend more than a dollar on anything as far as, you know, plush. I gotta do the math now. I'm gonna have to, I'm way over here, so I'm gonna have to talk louder. How, how, much, does, how much does a little people weigh? So if we're buying one at the bins. Less than two ounces. So if they weigh two ounces, it's one sixteenth of a $1. pound. eighty nine. Right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, no, it's one eighth of a pound. So if you're paying a buck sixty, you're paying 20 cents for it right right i hope i did the math right so so basically you're paying 20 cents for that item and you sell it for five dollars that's that's a big multiplier that's... and then you're listing it in hopes that you know i'm going to find another one to put with it and sell 40 cents worth for ten dollars right which that's... is much better because it's one shipping right and i don't do free shipping so you know i in addition to whatever i'm getting for the item they also are paying the shipping um so there are some people whose model is, I'm not going to sell anything for less than this, or their sell-through rate needs to be this. I want to save the vintage toys, and I just love to sell smalls and other plush, so I don't worry too much. Eventually, everything sells. Eventually. And people that have a space issue, like if they're, if they're doing this out of a spare bedroom, or maybe... Part an apartment. Of garage or an apartment, then you're absolutely going to have to worry more about buying things that sell for higher prices or buying things that sell much more quickly because you don't have the storage space to store a lot of low dollar or slow moving items. But we have a 30 by 50 building, plus I use some space in the house also to store stuff. So you know, we're, we're set for a while. I mean, if, if sales were to just drop and stop, then, you know, I might eventually run out of space. But, you know, you have to choose the model that works for you. And for us, I'm a volume seller. You know, I list a lot and I sell quite a lot, especially during fourth quarter for what I like to sell. So... Hope that answered any questions about that. But, you know, we've all got to do what's right for us. But as far as the pricing, we go with comps. We, we go we with bring comps. It back and, you know, sometimes we bring back something thinking it's going to sell for 10 and it sells for 30. And sometimes we're thinking 30 and it sells for 10. 10. But we, we, we can't just set a price on it. You know, I could... I would love to be able to buy a little people and put a $30 price tag on it and sell them like that all day, but they're not going to sell. Mm -hmm. You have to, no matter what you paid for it, you have to price it accordingly. And when sales are slow, like they are for a lot of us right now, my seven, eight, nine dollar sales are all adding up. And that's what's, you know, keeping us afloat because this is our primary income. So, you know, I have to do what's best for us. I'm taking offers for way less on some things than what I initially listed it for because I'm still making a sizable profit and so it, it's got to go because I've got bills to pay. And it's been sitting there a long time for those things too. If it's new things, you don't you don't take a big Not a big drastic. Not no. a big drastic cut on something that's recently listed, but older stuff, 
that's been there for two years, absolutely we'll take a, a, a cut out of the price just to make it gone because that we could use that, that money to that buy something else. That space too, yeah, and that space. All right, so let's get into what sold last weekend. Y'all, if you can see at the top of my screen, nothing on Poshmark. As slow as eBay is right now for me, the other platforms are even slower. I think for a lot of places, this was spring break. My grandchildren came down from New York to visit me this week. So there's lots of stuff going on in family life right now. So sales are slow. But I honestly think something's up with eBay too. So it is what it is. I just keep telling everybody, you know, keep working, keep listing, because fourth quarter will be here before you know it. All right, so a couple of sales on Mercari. Um, this was a Fisher-Price Octonauts Peso Penguin figure. It sold for $8. It's just a little bitty. This is Ty. Ty, I t you know, I talk about this. You know, sometimes I just buy them. They've got the tag or they're really old. And sometimes I just get them. This one sold on an offer on Mercari for $7 for just a little white Romeo bear. And then these are from my online high bid auction. I won almost two years ago. Still selling that stuff. Still have stuff to list. At this point, it's just, it was like a lot of smalls in like big boxes. And I just, I need to sort through it eventually. That or I might take it to a yard sale at this point and let some of this other stuff go because I have made my money unless it's something that's worth a lot. But this was M&M Yellow Christmas Tree and Green Santa plush lot. I won all of the lots. They were large lots of the M&Ms. Nobody bid on them. And I was getting large lots for like one and two dollars. So I just went ahead and got them all. Um, these two sold for $14. One sell on Etsy. This is a Commonwealth Moose Plush 18 inch sold for $24.95. It was from 1987. All right, and then eBay. This is Fitz and Floyd. I bought a whole stack of these dinner plates. They were all different veggies. So this was one of the artichoke plates. This person bought one of them, sold for $13.45. This was the last of this series. I bought a bunch of backpacks and puzzles and all kinds of stuff the weekend that Finders Keepers opened here in a town near us. It's one of those bin pallet type companies where you pay a set amount and each day the price gets cheaper until there's a day when everything is a dollar. Well, that was the day. Everything was a dollar that day and we spent 200 and some dollars and got tons of stuff. But this is the last of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle backpacks. It sold for $11.66. This I, it is going to be in, I think, the next uh, haul video that we're going to be releasing. But it sold before the video was even out. This is a gunned Pusheen Stormy Cat plush. It was 7 inches tall. Had its original tag still. Sold very quickly for $11.66. This was from the Goodwill Bin stuff. Tolo Clown Roly Poly Chime Ball. I like Tolo. I don't find it very often, but a lot of times they're these little plastic figures. Um, and that when you move their limbs, it makes like a clicking sound. This one sold for $17.05. Gorham Ariana. We sold... A lot of this when I initially listed it and then I'm down to like a few small pieces the the coffee cups and saucers and stuff like that but this person bought the last of the coffee cups that were four inches tall she paid $34.98 for three of the last three these men's Ariat boots um, Robert picked them up somewhere. I don't normally pick up boots. That's a Robert thing. Um, they've been listed a little while. I got an offer of $76. I usually try to bounce this stuff off 
off of Robert because, you know, I have a set price that I did. And if it's less than I want to ask him, and he was like, grab it. $76 for these pair of used Ariat boots. I think I picked this up at an estate sale. I think there was something inside of it. And that's what I was going for until I realized that this was a very cute tin from England. It sold for $13.45. Aeropostal Haley Skinny Flare Women's Jeans. I saw quite a few pairs of um, jeans and some shirts that weekend. I haven't been listing. So, you know, sometimes I think if you're not listing specific um, categories, then you don't sell as much in there. Um, these jeans sold for $12.15. Robert loves processing the jeans, so when we work together on it, then I usually try to get some of the other stuff done. Another pair of jeans, Wrangler. I tell you, this this is what we pick up around here. Old Navy Wrangler, American Eagle, some Levi's, but these men's jeans sold for $13.75. On average, we pay probably between $1 and $2 for most of the jeans that we pick up. So it's still a nice profit. Fur skins. This is from Xavier Roberts, who also does the Cabbage Patch Kids. This one was from 1985. 15-inch um, plush. Um, there are some that are larger. Um, this one did have its original boots and, and outfit. Sold for $22.45. Petting Zoo. As soon as um, we released the video showing this stuff, I had several comments of people who first was telling me who Fiona was and then a couple that said I would have bought it, but it sold very quickly. Um, I guess she's from the Ohio Zoo. She was like a baby there. Um, sold for $15.25. Again, I'm pretty sure that was a Ben's find. Animal Adventure Brown Rabbit Plush. This was a large... 19 inch bunny from 2022, so not even really that old. Sold for $22.45. These Bright Starts and Infantino and Lamaze Baby Lots have been a surprise to me. I normally don't pick up these plush. Um, I just kind of stay away, other than Lovies and stuff, I stay away from a lot of the other plush or the little small activity toys. But now I've learned, don't do that. I'm going to be buying them probably all summer because, you know, I just put a whole bunch of them out on this, my area and they are selling consistently for, I list them at $39.95 and they're selling for about $35. So can't beat that. A lot of times you can get a whole handful of them for a couple of dollars. Disney Junior Tots. I had one of these listed for a while and again, I ended the listing, I found the cat, added it to the listing, bumped the price up, and they they sold, I think they sold actually for more than if I had listed them separately. $17.95. I'm, I'm not familiar with this cartoon at all, but it's called Junior Tots. Dakin Vintage Rabbit Plush from 1989. That number two on the end of my title means I've got two of them with different conditions. So that's how I manage them. Um, but it sold for $35.95. This was a viewer sale. The next two, Marsha bought. So thank you very much, Marsha. She bought the Starters Red T-shirt for $10.27. And then she also bought this Tweaky Bee Colette Pink Poodle Dog Plush for $16.51. Anytime I have found that Twinkie Pea Colette, I don't even know what that is. Or I know it's, I think, from Toys R Us maybe. But they sell very quickly. So definitely keep your eyes open for these little pink poodles. These are Merrill Palmetto Midnight Sandals. I like picking up Merrill and earth shoes. Uh, what are the other ones, Robert? Clark's, some of those type shoes. We can get them for, you know, one, two, three dollars maybe 
at a lot of the yard sales and estate sales. And like this pair right here sold for $18. She's already left me great feedback. I picked this up from T and Pickers at their yard sale. Um, there was several of these. I had never seen them before. Um, they're from the Sad-Eyed Friends of Sam, Sad Sam and Honey, but the, they were other animals. This was Milkshake the Rabbit. It sold for $30 very quickly, and it went to a freight forwarding company, which I love freight forwarders because once it gets there, you know, we're done as far as responsibility for that, the arrival of that product. Because, you know, it shows delivered to the freight forwarding company. And if they don't say there's any issue with it, then, you know, our, our seller guarantees click in. And then if, if it was to get to the buyer and there's damage or anything like that, we don't know if that package was um, repackaged, put into a poly bag, any of that stuff. The address is very obviously a lot of times there'll be some kind of number to assign that um, order to a specific person on their end that the freight forwarding company. And, you know, or what I've done in the past is I Googled that address and it's a warehouse and you can then go into the, the Google Maps where you can see stuff and you'll see what it's really called, that company. And I won a case one time that somebody um, claimed that the package, uh, there was something wrong with the item. And once eBay saw that it was a freight forwarding company, they um, took away the negative feedback and closed a case, I think, that had happened with it. So don't be afraid to ship to freight forwarders. This is VeggieTales. This is Bob the Tomato. It was a teeny tiny little plastic figure. I love VeggieTales, especially when I can find a whole bunch of them. Usually I list them individually because somebody wants to add it to, you know, a collection that they have or a piece that they've lost. Um, this tiny little figure sold for $8.96. Columbia PFG Men's Shirt. We, we find these occasionally at yard sales and stuff for usually one or two dollars. This one sold for $16.29. Fisher Price Little People um, Pilot. This is another example of when I've listed a single item waiting for me to find something else to go with it and it sold. This Fisher Price Little People Pilot sold for $7.15. Disney Baby Minnie Mouse Lovey. This sold the same day I listed it um, for $8.96. Ralph Lauren Classic Fit Men's Shirt sold for $11.41. A lot of these we can pick up at yard sales for a dollar or less. This is a multi-quantity order. I had two of these rabbits. They were in different conditions, so I had them listed separately. This person wanted to buy both. Paid $32 for the two Walmart sheep Easter baskets. This is a white duck plush, 14 inch. There was no tag. Google Lens wasn't helping me identify. A lot of times I just go ahead and list it. Use all the keywords that you possibly can to help somebody find this listing. It sold for $13.45. Nanco, not a favorite brand, but they do tons of character plush. This is Papa Smurf. 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 12 inch, sold for $8.96. All about the bread and butter sales. This is Fun World. That's the same company that puts out that scream mask. This was um, a skull skeleton pirate mask. I picked it up like in a Halloween bundle of a bunch of different things. Um, sold for $17.95. That we went to an estate sale and bought three cases or like cardboard boxes full of HL scale train accessories. None of the trains but I have sold almost all of it at this point. This was just one of the left hand remote control switches, sold for $15. This is 
This was in that same lot. These were Noma Dickinsonville street signs and bench. I just decided to put all of them together. I think individually they were worth about $5 each. Um, went ahead and just made one listing, sold for $15, best offer. Yogibo, I had not heard of this brand before, but came to find out that it was, you know, harder to find. So I went ahead and listed it with a decent price sold for $26.95. This was one of the Oscar food processors, the vintage one, it was called the Big Oscar. I went ahead and parted it out. This is like the base that went under the metal blade. I think this is probably the second piece from that whole set and it sold for $8. I've already made all of our money back. I think we paid $5 for the whole thing. This is Hallmark, another one of the brands that's mostly bread and butter. This was Larry the Lion, sold for $9.15. This sold immediately after listing. I'm wondering if it was the shirt because it's a, a Cabbage Patch doll from 2020, but it did have this Babyland t-shirt on. I'm telling you, it sold probably within a couple of hours of listing for $9.95. One of my biggest plush sales. This is my Commonwealth Brown Dog Plush. It's large. It was 27 inches long from 1993. It sold for $74.35. Don't be afraid to list plush for a, a lot of money. You know, it's, I don't know if I had seen any uh, comps on this one. So I just figured with the size, the fact that it was vintage, Commonwealth is a brand I like. Um, I just threw a $79.95 and it's been listed for a while, but you know, you just got to wait for that right buyer. I think it was a good weekend of sales. You know, again, it's the highs and lows. This last week, none of like six days straight was less than my, you know, the, I have a set amount I like to make each week or each day, and then by the week, and this week was bad, but I'm still making sales, and that's just because I have 10,000 items listed. Are my sales, I'm not selling a lot, believe me, but I'm making enough, right? And that's the name of the game. For me, I gotta make enough to pay our bills so that we can still do, do life the way we like it, and that's always been our goal. We aren't getting rich doing this, but we've got the life we want. We both stay home. Robert homeschools, does his martial arts. You know, we like to go do these sourcing trips and go visit family and, you know, you can't do that or you have to at least plan if you're not your own boss. And I'm the boss, right? It's work, bye.